nobody to blame but myself. For some reason, I decided I'll, I'll go ahead and watch NXT TakeOver War Games tonight. Why did I do that? Oh, I, I know. Because I wanted to see what Pat McAfee would do. And I had a little bit of morbid curiosity, admittedly, about Leon Ruff as the NXT North American Champion. But that was it. I should have not bothered watching the whole show and just watched a couple of the things that I actually wanted to see. Would have saved me plenty of boredom, that's for sure. Uh, I don't watch NXT on a weekly basis. So, there's that. But if anything, that could be a positive sometimes. Because I'm coming in fresh, not really caught up on anything. Might seek some clarity and some understanding of some things, sure. But I can just focus on the match and view it from that perspective and not think about bad booking going into it or anything like that. I shouldn't help here. This sucked. McAfee tried to save it in the main event. Did a damn good job of it. But this show still sucked. Especially the first three matches. I couldn't imagine sitting down watching this show tonight and thinking that this was a great takeover show. This was a bad show, period. Let alone compared to the standard of some of the previous takeover she shows we've seen over the years. This is really bad. Really, really bad. I can't imagine, for example, looking at this Women's War Games match and thinking that this was good. It was a sloppy shit show spot fest that there ever has been one. Now, Io Shirai, of course, shine. The champion shine. But, of course, the match wasn't built around her. She was a last-minute freaking throw-in. And then all the while, you make her a last-minute throw-in, even though she's your NXT Women's Champion, and you have her pinned by who? Freaking Raquel Gonzalez? What the hell did she do that was noteworthy in this match? And just random spots all over the freaking place. And the moon hit a nice eclipse. I will give her that on the chairs. Like, that looked brutal and legit. But too much sloppiness. And, and the whole building this around Shotzi Blackheart and Candice LeRae. Like, Candice LeRae is supposed to be a heel. We call her the Poison Pixie. Sorry, don't work for me. Shotzi Blackheart is supposed to be a babyface and some type of big deal. Apparently, a, a lot of y'all are aligned with Triple H. And think that this half has got real potential? Well, the only potential I saw is that she's potentially infringing on the gimmick of DX without any of the personality or redeeming qualities. Just because you ride a tank like God doesn't mean that you're going to become a star like him. She sucks! What the hell's wrong with y'all? I couldn't imagine looking at somebody like Io Shirai in this match and looking at somebody like Shotzi Blackheart and thinking Shotzi's the one that you want to sh hot shot up the ladder. I can't imagine looking at her right now and saying that she's bona fide star material. Like, even the way she entered this freaking match. She goes underneath the ring, grabs a toolbox and a crowbar, throws them in the ring, and then doesn't do anything with them when she gets in there. Who booked this crap? Again, Io Shirai had several moments where I thought she really shined. She came across to me as the one real star in this match. Rhea Ripley certainly should be in a spot like this getting a lot of shine, but of course this company screwed her up from WrestleMania and going forward, so what the hell type of surprise do you get out of this? Like, she just kind of blended it as well. It felt like a reject glow match as much as anything else. At least all the women are trying to be some type of gimmicks. But a lot of these gimmicks just seem really stupid. A lot of these women seem miscast. And the booking of this to have your champion be a throw-in, but then have your champion get pinned, there was absolutely unequivocally, beyond a shadow of a doubt, no freaking reason to do so! Unless you're a moron! This was bad. It is not sexist to say that the women's match was bad. It seems like that's the approach of some of you male fans out there. There have been plenty of good women's matches in NXT over the years. Son, this ain't one of them! And I was hopeful when I heard the next match was going to be Timothy Thatcher and Tommaso Ciampa. I'm like, okay, these guys aren't going to do this random spot fest. we got to get all of our crap in. These guys are going to wrestle a physical, kind of brawling, brutal type of style. will be a nice counterculture to what was the abortion of that opening match. I'm looking forward to it. 
Well, this one sucked, too, because it seemed like the commentary team was more invested in spending time talking about how fragile Tommaso Ciampa is. Fragile. It must be French. Or he's Italian or whatever the hell. Why are you going to sit there and talk about his neck and all these other injuries he's had? We know it. It doesn't mean it needs to be talked about. Now, if you were sitting there and doing it to sell one of the moves that Timothy Thatcher did, like if he had dropped Tommaso Ciampa on the back of his neck and his head, then it makes sense to bring that up. You don't bring that up for several minutes at the beginning of the fucking match. This is stupid. It went way too damn long. Like, who thought it's a good idea to say, hey, Tommaso Ciampa, a guy that's been a long time associated with NXT, you know, but thought of having match of the year candidates, you know, few of the years, former tag champion in this brand, former NXT champion for this brand, and we're just going to talk up how ceramic he is and how fragile he is. Who thinks that's a good idea? Who thinks that makes any damn sense? It was stupid, stupid, stupid. But not as stupid as giving Cameron Grimes freaking pay-per-views time here. Against Dexter Loomis in a, we used to work for TNA, but let's pretend we don't. <laughs> let's pretend that we didn't. We're going to have name changes. I was like, I was looking for a little bit. It took me several minutes to register that Dexter Loomis was Samuel Shaw. That took a minute. Like, he's got a, still got the same creepy vibe, just maybe in a little bit of a different way. But strap match... Already in a match, bookended with War Games matches, to me kind of feels like, eh, it might be overkill, but hey, strap match, you know, shows like this for this type of audience where the NXT folks, by and large, only care about moves and matches. They don't care about characters, personalities, storytelling. They could tell you they do, but they don't. They absolutely do not. They're the instant gratification, satisfaction nerds that sit there and think that this style of wrestling is going to carry to the masses. When it doesn't, it absolutely doesn't. And seeing matches like Loomis versus Grimes and how they set up Ciampa and freaking Thatcher and that women's war games match made me wonder how the hell is AEW not doubling NXT in the ratings every Wednesday night. Because if this takeover show is a reflection of what happens weekly on USA Network with the NXT TV show then my God, how do any of you sit through this crap? Like from the very beginning, the emphasizing, I want to use my own strap and just whack. And by the way, to those idiot nerds, whether it was the wrestlers or the fans, whoever it was that kept hitting the damn fence throughout the whole night, cut that crap out! Stupid! So goddamn distracting. Unbelievable. Yeah, Loomis beat Cameron Grimes, but who won? Nobody that actually watched this shit show. Like, all three of these matches to start off the night were just really, really clunky, really, really poor in their execution, really, really poor in the way they were laid out. All of them took way too damn much time. Maybe if you had to cut five to ten minutes off of each of them, it could have been a little bit better. But, of course, since it's NXT, and you're dealing with a bunch of moving match marks, both in the company and the fans watching, uh, we gotta drag this out as long as we can as we spend time mapping it out. Everybody's gotta get their crap in. Ugh. 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 Now, my hope was, is that as bad as those first three matches were, and they were bad, they were so bad. Some of you are gonna get all in your emotions with your flaming keyboard figures of fire in the comment section trying to assert to me that they weren't bad. They were bad, 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 bad. You can have your opinion and I'll be right. Okay? Thank you. Moving on. I was really hoping this triple threat match for the North American Championship was going to send the show in the right direction. And, you know, because I'm thinking, hey, you got Leon Ruff, kind of a nice, cool story. Damian Priestley looks like he's the type of guy that you would put together in a wrestling lab and say, I want to build you up to be a future main event pay-per-view opponent for Drew McIntyre and the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns. And your hoping is, is that the dynamics of those two are enough to can carry Johnny Average, Johnny Garbage Pails, Johnny Gargano, in whatever the fuck his name is, into a halfway decent entertaining match. 
Yeah, maybe Johnny Gargano appeals better as a babyface. Seeing him as a heel, like, he sucks. And, and what's so different about him? Yeah, exactly. Sit down and shut up. Um, the match was okay. It was, it was working. It was going. My only criticism of Leon Ruff is when you are that tiny and that small, everything that you do should be explosive. And he had some nice moves in there. But every that like that corkscrew cutter off the top turnbuckle looks sick. And of course Gargano kicked it out. Kicked out of it because we gotta get a bunch more crap in. But if you're gonna be that tiny, then everything you do must have explosiveness to it. Some suddenness and burst. And dude looks like he's half-ass, you know, dragon hind tit jogging when he's running the ropes. No! Like, the other guys in the match should not seem like they're running the ring, running the ropes faster than you are. That's the advantage of being smaller, is you should be able to be more sudden, more explosive. You're running the ropes like you're a seven-footer. Like, otherwise, I thought he did cool stuff, but to me, that's something, and that's a big thing that he's got to get better at. Um... But overall, I thought it was okay until he started his associating the screen guys with this. Like, why is this a thing? Can somebody explain this to me? Like, when did this become a thing? Why has this become a thing? How is this not just another retread, retard version? Excuse me. Oh, don't use that word. My apologies for using that word. It was out of flavor. It was uncalled for. There. Hopefully that will save me from some of the cancel culture police, okay? It was dumb. It was ignorant for me to say that, just like it was dumb and ignorant for them to do this crap and really just interfere with and ruin this match. Like, you had Ruff win the North American Championship just to have him immediately lose it at TakeOver. Pfft, on that. And then you're doing all this scream stuff. At least if you're going to reveal that there's a leader to this... And there's a man under one of the masks, and it's not just going to be some retreaded retribution garbage. At least have it be David Arquette or somebody else. It was me, Austin. It was me all along, Austin. Like exactly the type of Mark ass crap you would expect to come from a Mark. And that was Austin Theory. And that was what we did. Gargano wins, match was going well, and then the finish happened, and then the reveal of Austin Theory was just lame. And at this point in time, I'm just begging and pleading to hurry up and get to the freaking main event already. And we did. And thankfully we did. As it saved me from going on and giving a true burial for the rest of the show, which it kind of sort of deserved. You had the Undisputed Era versus Team McAfee in the main event War Game. And I believe it was CM Punk this past week was talking about how Pat McAfee um, should make these other guys and gals at NXT, especially the guys, feel embarrassed. He's right. They should be embarrassed. This dude's got it. They don't. This dude is picking it up. Clearly, they're not. For some of these guys, they've been on the road as a wrestler for 5, 10, 15, in some cases, maybe 20 years. And they suck hind tit. When it comes to all the things that really matter about wrestling, in terms of character, in terms of personality, in terms of storytelling, they can't do any of this crap. They can only crash test dummy. Because that's the only way they learn how to do anything. Meanwhile, here's McAfee coming in, picking up this stuff so quickly, reminding me of Kurt Angle in that aspect, of how a guy who just comes in and just seems to get it and has a natural knack and feel for it, but works hard at it, and every time you see him, just gets better and better. Like, the whole reason that this match worked to me and worked so well is not because of all you marks marking out for the freaking undisputed Insomnia-era nerds that have the freaking charisma of paint or watching wallpaper dry or even some of these other dudes on Team McAfee, like the tag team champs look like just another guy or just another set of guys. Pete Dunn, the Bruiserweight. The Bruiserweight name is kind of cool. 
I think he does some cool stuff. I think his ring gear looks horrendous every time. Every time. Head of the curve when it comes to fashion, he is not. It's like he's trying to wear Taz stuff, and it just doesn't work the same. But Pat McAfee, being the actual heel, Pat McAfee, enjoying getting the heat and embracing getting the heat and embracing being the one that's hated, being the antagonist that you build everything around, made this match work so well. Even when he's doing the swantons off the top of the cage, like when he gets a big spot delivered to him, you feel it. Like, I don't get why once he hits Adam Cole with a low blow, apparently Adam Cole has titanium nuts, and then he'll super kick a freaking Pat McAfee, and he starts grabbing his cock. Like, I was weird. Go watch it. It was weird. It was weird. But the only, the only thing, again, with this match, and so often is the case now in wrestling. Like, even when the matches seem to go really well, you get to this point for these matches that go way too long. In this case, this match was 45 minutes. You know, you probably could have cut 5 or 10 minutes off of it. I was really disappointed that all four of the tables that they had with the names on of the Undisputed Era, that those guys didn't each actually go through their coordinated table at some point. I thought that was a great chance to tell a story during the match, and of course they didn't go there. We just got to get a bunch of random shit in! Because that's what stupid wrestling does today! Oh. Like, I don't know if I'm that irritated that McAfee didn't win or not. Like, maybe you should have him go over one. Like, imagine if you have him pin Adam Cole. Ooh. Here, it feels like he kind of took the easy way out where you didn't have either Cole or McAfee involved in the decision. Because I will at least say this, to Adam Cole's credit, he plays off of McAfee really well. McAfee plays really well off of him. They have really good chemistry together. And the fact that you built this match and the finish doesn't involve one of them going over the over to me is kind of disappointing. You know, and having Undisputed Era win, like, how long have these guys been near the top? And how good have they really been for business? And time to shake stuff up a little bit. I get that you've got this kind of randomly thrown together group versus a well-established faction. Maybe you don't want to have the well-established faction lose. But maybe this is a perfect time to have done so. Like Pat McAfee, beyond question, was the star of this match. I don't see how you could look at this match and think anything other than that. Now, surely, because Pat McAfee actually knows how to be a character because he actually has a personality and knows how to use it, because he actually knows how to get heat and maintain heat and build heat throughout the match to where you actually want to see him get his comeuppance like a good heel is supposed to do, I'm sure that a lot of the match and move marks that are going to watch this review are ultimately going to crap on him. And they're going to talk about how great the Bruiserweight was and how great freaking Fish and O'Reilly were with their boring asses. Like, who told Kyle O'Reilly... To cut a promo mid-match in the direction of Pat McAfee. How dare you, sir? How dare you? Go in the corner. As far as I'm concerned, don't come back. This is NXT. This is Warriors. Oh, shut up. That's the best you can come up with? Main event. Finish, I will admit, was a little flat. And while the match was very long... I saw some people pining on Twitter saying, oh, this is pretty good, should be the chant, not this is awesome. Eh, that's because to me, they're more focused on all the spots that you got to have in these War Games matches, and they're not focused on the characters, the personality, and the storytelling. I thought this match was great because of Pat McAfee, period. If you don't like that, that's too damn bad. You might as well get aboard the hype train for the mighty McAfee, because he's only going to continue to get better from here. And if you don't like that, then maybe you should tell some of these other nerds that you're marking out to to learn how to be characters and personalities and tell damn stories with the characters and their matches. Even with that, even with the Mighty McAfee doing what he can, it could not fully and totally redeem or save this show. It couldn't. The show is still bad. One... Pretty good match out of five. Does not enough 
to cut the mustard. It's not enough to do any of that. It just isn't. That's why OTR Essential has always been not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Because I'll shoot it to you straight. Not worrying about your feelings, not worrying about trying to play it cool or anything like that. You don't have to like it. You don't have to agree with it. You can just learn to live with it and know that I'm usually right, okay? Thank you.